So you're engaged to be married, but how do you actually go about booking a wedding? Today, I'm going to be going through with you the three simple steps or the three things that you really need to know about in order to plan your wedding. We're going to look at the different types of weddings there are. We're going to look at the different types of venues there are. And then we're going to have a look at what you have to do to book the registrar to legally marry you. My name is Caroline Langham. I'm a wedding planner and a wedding venue owner. I've been in the wedding industry for over 30 years, helping wedding couples plan their perfect wedding day. So let's begin by having a look at the different types of weddings we can have. Now, most people, when they think about getting married, want to be legally married and they want the benefits of the law when it comes to being legally married. So to be equal partners and if anything happened to one or other of the party, they would be um, protected under English law um, as next of kin of that person um, departed. So it is a really, really important thing to consider because you can have legal wedding ceremonies or you can have non-legal wedding ceremonies. What makes a wedding ceremony legal? There's two things uh, fundamentally. The wedding ceremony itself, if it's to be legal, has to be performed in a licensed venue like a registry office or a venue that's an approved premises and it's been approved for the solemnisation of weddings by the county council. So it's all governed by the government and it is orchestrated by the county council of each region within England and Wales. So you have to be in an approved premise or you can have a religious wedding ceremony which would be in a religious building and would be orchestrated by the, uh, the head of that church. Now that might be, for example, um, a vicar or a priest. So you would need to choose whether or not you wanted to have a religious ceremony or a civil ceremony. If you chose to have a civil ceremony, then you've also got two options here. You could choose to be married or form a civil partnership. Both of these options are now open to everybody. So there is no inequality there as to who can choose to be married and who can choose a civil partnership. Fundamentally, both of these options would cover you in English law so that if anything did happen, you would both be entitled to um, inherit, for example. The differences are that a marriage ceremony is basically a spoken vow. So quite often in traditional uh, weddings, for example, you would hear um, the partners saying to each other um, that they take them to be their lawful wedded husband or wife. It is a verbal vow. You also make promises to each other and then potentially have a ring ceremony, which is, isn't part of the legal part but their spoken vows. A civil partnership is a written contract, but both of these need to be done in a licensed premise with a registrar present. You cannot form a civil partnership, as far as I'm aware, in a church. You can only do a civil partnership in a civil setting. So you can choose marriage in either a civil setting or in a church. If you want a civil partnership, it's going to be in a civil setting, which means it's going to be a registry office or a licensed venue. If you wanted to do something a little bit different and have what we call a celebrant-led wedding, then this would be a non-legal ceremony. However, it does give you more options and more choices. There are no laws around where these uh, ceremonies need to be performed. However, they are not legal, so you're not going to have the same legal status. If you did go and have a uh, celebrant-led wedding and you wanted to be legally married, then you might need to go along to a local registry office or have a small ceremony in a civil setting in order to make, sh make sure that your wedding is legal. So where, for example, you might see a humanist style of wedding maybe out on a lawn in a, um, a stately home or a grand garden, or you might want to have an elopement wedding and go somewhere wild and wonderful to the top of a mountain. Just the two of you, maybe a photographer and a celebrant, 
At the moment, in English and Welsh law, that is not classed as a legal wedding ceremony. So that is something that you need to consider. The type of wedding that you want and where you want to hold it, whether you want it to be religious or civil, and whether or not you want to be married or have a civil partnership. The second thing that we're going to talk about today is the different types of venues that are out there. So obviously we've touched a little bit on whether or not you're going to have a civil ceremony or a religious ceremony. And the two of those sort of speak for themselves. You've either got to get married in a church setting, and this generally has got its own rules around um, how and who can get married in those settings. So if you've got a particular church in mind, if it's your local home parish, for example, you might need to approach the vicar or the priest and ask to talk to them about the rules around um, getting married there. Because quite often churches will have their own stipulations and you may well have to be resident in that parish for a certain length of time before you will be allowed to be married. Some parishes as well will also ask you to attend Sunday service for so many weeks prior to the wedding because I think it's very important that they will read out the bans to the marriage each week for three consecutive weeks as it used to be before the wedding. So quite often the vicar or priest will expect you and your partner to both be in attendance at Sunday service. Now if you wanted to get married somewhere outside of your home county it means that this can be quite difficult to achieve because you do need to be resident. Sometimes it's seven days, sometimes it's longer. Sometimes it can be two weeks, three weeks, or even four weeks. So it does restrict where you can get married if you're looking at religious weddings, okay? So that's something to bear in mind. The other option is that you can get married in either a registry office, and as you know, most towns and cities, certainly all cities, have got a registry office. It could be your town hall. It's where you would go to register your births, deaths and marriages. So you can approach any of your local councils to find out where your nearest registry office is. The other option is that you could get married in a licensed venue. These are what we would call approved premises and each licensed venue has to be licensed. And you would need to contact the county council of where the venue is that you wish to be married in in order to arrange that wedding. You could have a wedding venue in the county where you live and that makes it a little bit easier in some respects because you would arrange the registrar to attend that civil licensed premises and you would be able to give your notice to marry in the same uh, setting with the same registry office. Of course, many people choose a destination wedding and they have chosen a venue perhaps outside of where their normal place of residence is. So in those circumstances, you would need to approach the venue that you have chosen and they will be able to tell you who their local registry office is. Once you've chosen your venue and you've got a time and a date for your wedding, you would need to approach the registry office and ask them to officiate your ceremony. So you're going to book the registrar to come out to that licensed venue and perform your wedding ceremony for you. Now we'll come on to point three, which is the part that um, some people don't realise they have to do. There's a third thing that needs to be done, and that is all about the legal bit, really. You have to give something called a notice to marry. Now, wherever you might live in England or Wales and wherever you might be getting married, it doesn't matter. You still have to give your notice to marry. So we've talked about organising the registrars to come and officiate your wedding on the day of your wedding. This is about giving notice to marry that has to be done before your wedding day. So the minimum amount of time that you need to give notice to marry is 29 days. So you cannot get married before 29 days has expired. So you need to go along to your local registry office. So this is in the county where you reside and you're going to give notice to marry. And you have to sign a declaration to say that you intend marrying each other on a date at a set time at a set venue. 
and the registry office will check that that venue is a licensed venue and they are able to perform that wedding on that day. They will also check that you are free to marry. So you have to prove that if you've been married before, you'll be taking along with you the decree absolute. If you've been married before and unfortunately your partner has passed away, then you will be asked to provide a original copy of your uh, death certificate of your partner. You will also be asked for proof of who you are. That might be an identity card or a passport. And you will also have to be a British national. If you're not a British national, you have to prove um, with a visa that you have got the correct visas in place to be able to marry in the UK. So you need 29 days notice, but before you can give notice to marry, you also have to be resident within that county for seven days. So if you and your partner live in different counties, you will have to give notice separately in the county where you reside. It doesn't have to be done on the same day. There will be independent interviews anyway. When you do give notice to marry, you have to get married within 12 months of giving notice. So when we talk about the time frames, you need a minimum 29 days, but you also need to make sure that you're getting married within 12 months of giving notice. I always advise my couples, maybe go along to your local registry office and make an appointment to give notice to marry around about six months before your wedding date. Or if you can pick a time or a season when the registry office is likely to be less busy, i.e. December, when everybody's Christmas shopping, that's usually a good time to go along and give your notice to marry. I think it's all also worth mentioning that if you did need a very short notice wedding, if there's any kind of emergency or you or your partner are unwell, there are special circumstances where you can have that 29 days notice shortened. So get in touch with your local registry office or speak to your venue if you do need to bring a wedding forward for whatever reason. So when you have your wedding ceremony and it's the day of your wedding, you turn up at the wedding venue, you're going to meet those registrars for the first time. You will have given notice to marry where you live and then you will see the registrars that are going to marry you on the day of your wedding. And just before your ceremony, you will have to have interviews together. And this is because the registrar that is going to marry you will have been sent all of the information from your home county registrar. And they will want to go through all of that information and check that they've got all of the details perfectly correct before they go ahead with the wedding itself. So always allow time for your interviews prior to your wedding ceremony. I know I get asked this quite a lot, Caroline, why do we have to be here an hour before our ceremony time? It's simply this, you know, you're having a wedding, we've got the wedding guests to arrive, we've got the couple to arrive, then we've got the registrars arriving, we've got photographers arriving. So there's a lot of people to get into the venue to get settled, to give some arrival drinks to, and to show them where everything is. Then we've got to um, organise privacy so that you and your partner, whether doing it together or separately, can have an interview. And that interview has to be performed before the registrar will go ahead. As we touched on a little earlier, in order for you to be legally married, you also need two witnesses. If you are considering an elopement wedding, don't worry about it because most venues will be able to provide you with two witnesses. So for a marriage to be legal, we need the registrar, we need the two partners who are getting married and the two witnesses. We all need to witness the vows that you make to each other and then all of those parties need to sign the wedding schedule, which has now replaced the wedding register, is the key document which is going to be your legal document. After your wedding day, all of that will get uploaded to the general register and then afterwards you will be posted or sent your marriage schedule and this will be your legal document that you will need going forward. Now, as we all know, government guidelines can change um, quite rapidly 
Um, so just to make sure that we've got all of the details correct, because this is to do with the legalities of your wedding, I'm going to add a link in the description below um, to the government website where you can check all the facts and figures, make sure that everything that's in this video is still up to date. If anything does change, I will try to add it into the description below. I'm going to put the link in there and I'm also going to put a free handout so that you've got notes on everything that we've discussed today. If you've enjoyed this video, please do give it a thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. And if you'd like to be notified each time we post a new video, then please make sure to tick the notification setting. That way, every time we put up a new video, you're going to get it straight to your inbox. So thank you for joining me today. My name is Caroline Langham, and I'm hoping I'm going to be sharing with you my top tips and advice when it comes to wedding planning.